Hello, and welcome to Tea Time with Torla. So, today you were spared a video on timed exclusivity and why I think it's not great. I was sitting in my chat on Monday of the past week, and someone goes, Hey, I just finished Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I know you haven't played it. Would you like to borrow it? And I think you can guess that I said yes. Final Fantasy VII is a game that's near and dear to my heart. It was the elusive game my brother was playing when, when I was still playing the Genesis. He just bought the brand new shiny PlayStation 1. I, I do have a history with it and I have cosplayed as Vincent Valentine a couple times. I don't think I have any pictures handy or I would put them up. That was like 2004, it was 16 years ago. I don't really have much more to say on the topic except <laughs> this is one of my favorite games that's ever existed. And playing this remake made me feel like a little kid. Even just hearing the music again. Because it stuck with me all these years. I got more to say, so. It just sucks that this was timed exclusive. I know millions of people have already played this game and talked about it, but I finally got to play it. It was lent to me by a friend of mine who wishes to remain anonymous. I mentioned in my Hitman video that my friendship with Sony is on hold for now. The reason for that is censorship. In video games, we don't really need it. Nothing is real. There's no actual people. And some games evolve things that are awful and we'd never want to do in real life. Like Grand Theft Auto or being an eco-terrorist is trying to save the planet from an evil corporation that runs the world. Or even doing squats in a gym. My point is, these things all happen in Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I hope I'm not being too spoilery when I say that. Final Fantasy VII Remake handles like a dream. Everything plays well, combat is fluid, and sometimes a little unfair. The voice acting is great. Uh, I had Japanese voices. But that brings me to my first and really only complaint about Final Fantasy VII Remake, the translation. Now, I'm not fluent in Japanese, but I can tell you that Tanoshi So means it looks fun and not. Here goes nothing. There are massive sections of this localization that are paraphrased rather than properly translated. It's a bit of a mess. So much so that my mother was picking up on the inconsistencies, and she doesn't know Japanese at all. Apparently North America fans wanted this, and I'm not sure why. Maybe you're someone who played the game in English, but, but I do understand that English speakers don't talk like Japanese speakers. But some of the scenes lose context, or a little bit of impact if you don't translate them correctly. But I don't think I'm qualified to talk about this at length. I'm sure someone out there has made a video on the translation inconsistencies. Combat! I have a few issues with it. First, I play it on normal. I'm not anywhere near finished the game. Like most games, I hate grinding, but I do do all the side events and quests that came my way. I found that some side encounters were stupidly hard if you aren't leveled up a bit. I tried one of the optional encounters for summon materia, it didn't end well. Most regular enemies I fought along the way were pretty weak. I'm a little torn on the way the new active battle system works. Mashing the square button to gain meter is fine, but your party does almost nothing when you're in control of one character, not gaining much in the way of ATB gauge. Trying to do Chadley's combat trials and staggering enemies is hard when they die in like three hits. But maybe that's for hard mode and new game plus. The other side of combat is all the new materia. I find the amount of them just 
simply exhausting to try and figure out what's the best build I can come up with with the limited amount of slots I have. The material system was always interesting, but combined with Final Fantasy IX's weapon ability system, I think this is a really cool change, but I always thought that the material system was fantastic. Making so many abilities attached to weapons rather than just materia is interesting. Uh, there's less limit breaks. More weapons than were available in this section of Final Fantasy VII. I don't know, it's... Good. This game is paced well. It's, it's all sorts of good things, but I have to talk about the music next before I go into my discussion of the future. Final Fantasy VII's music is legendary. There's no way around it. It's breathtaking. It's fantastic. It's always been great. It carries the mood and every character has a theme. But I'm going to focus on only two themes. The two that stuck with me the most over the years. The ones that when I hear, I think, yeah, that's Final Fantasy VII. And the first is Tifa's theme. Tifa's theme makes me think of this person that wants to change the world through her kindness. Her heart's always in the right place. She's strong even in the face of adversity. There's a sadness in the song. There's a weight she's carrying with her and she tries not to let show. thing full of grand expectations and great sadness she never talks the future she doesn't dream she very much lives in the moment she's the type of character that helps those around her trying to make the most out of her life most of the other themes aren't as grand to me it's funny to me how these old pieces of music have evolved over the years, and how now, 23 years later, the songs evolve again, and a new generation of people can discover how deep and meaningful the music can be, and how it transcends language barriers. of being whimsical and caught up in some of my favorite video game music that's ever existed. Let's talk about the future. The Final Fantasy VII Remake has big shoes to fill, since this is only part one of an unknown number of parts. This is where I start to wonder how will the games fit together. I'm not sure how the open world of the original is going to survive in this bigger, more beautiful remake. Most of this game has been slums crammed with people and tight-knit communities of narrow streets and random junk. Sure, there are roads, building interiors, and some brief sections on the top plate, but rendering budget is a thing, and just because we have more CPU and GPU horsepower coming, doesn't mean you can just scale up this level of detail to an expansive open world and maintain part one's fantastic pacing and excellent storytelling. Looking back, the open world of the original added very little besides a way to get from points and grind for EXP. 
I will point to Final Fantasy XV and its awfully empty open world that gets dropped later in the game to return to a more linear game design. I made it to chapter 4 in that game before the boredom struck. With the technological wonder that is Midgar, they would have to get food shipped in from somewhere, right? I would assume that would be what Juno would provide. But I'd also think there'd be some sort of relatively local farming villages. This would mean roadways, something that the old open world was missing. My point is that there would have to be farms and other things somewhere around Midgar. Even if the city's burning off the life force of the planet and killing any fertile ground immediately around the city. This can be seen in the opening with the barren desert that immediately surrounds the city, but no roads? Just a stacked city. I wonder what part two will retcon from that opening since monsters seem to live just beyond the city limits for the poor residents of the slum to deal with. We're at the end of a console generation, and this is a timed exclusive for the PlayStation. There's a high chance that I will be purchasing the next section on PC or Xbox. So how do I move my save with me? Or will this even be an option? This is part of the reason I don't like episodic gaming. And I think this is one of the first time it's happened cross generation. If I was playing this on PC, I would have a little doubt that my save would be transferable. The only reason I'm thinking about this is because I really do love this game in all of its versions. So that's why its faults, even so minor, bother me. I know awards aren't a thing I do every episode, but today I have to award Final Fantasy VII Remake the Pudding Award and Hello Old Friend. All right, that's it. I do hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Final Fantasy VII over some of the game's most fantastic and iconic pieces of music by the legendary Nobuo Uematsu. All fun and happy stuff aside, I want to take a small section of my video and talk about something that has been bothering me for the last week. The riots and protests in America. I know I have a bunch of toys behind me. I know that I'm a person who tries to hide away in my little cubby hole with my video games and the things that make me feel better. But I can't run. I can't hide anymore. Not from this. First, the pandemic, the quarantine, and now this. George Floyd was an innocent man. George Floyd didn't need to die. We didn't need a martyr. None of this needed to happen. All of this happened because of bigotry, hate, and an abuse of power. I'm not well educated on this situation, and in fact, I'm not even an American, I'm a Canadian. I worked last night on my way out the door. Two police officers walked in the door. I didn't fear for my life. I could just imagine what that would be like for anyone else. Maybe if you're in America, that would have been terror-inducing. I've never been afraid of police up here. I've never seen a police officer up here unholster their gun for anything other than to protect innocence when there's someone else that's armed. 
I've never witnessed firsthand the kind of tragedies and travesties that I've seen on Twitter over the last week. It upsets me. It upsets me that a country that says they're free and they're for the freedom of the people and can make you recite an oath in school could have this kind of treatment of its citizens. Its citizens! Stay safe, everyone. And I hope that someone will finally listen and make a change. It's been too long. Until next time. Matane. Kyotsukete.